This episode of the Totally Rad Show was brought to you by Squarespace. On today's TRS, we get stung by Seth Rogen's new movie, The Green Hornet. So? Growing up, I'm sure your your parents, your father in particular, probably always said, when I was your age, we used to, you know, go to the movies and it was 10 cents and you'd see five things or... I don't think my dad along was those lines. born in the 20s. Oh. Well, <laughs> he was like, yeah. I like the Beach Boys. And I'm like, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, growing up, my, my, <laughs> uh, my memories of my father... Uh, some of them are him saying how he used to listen to radio serials all the time. He used to listen. Mm. Oh, we didn't have the Lone Ranger. I didn't even know what he looked like. And the Green Hornet was his favorite. The Green Hornet and the Shadow were these. Was a radio serial that my dad grew up listening to. And uh, and I always wanted to see the Green Hornet. Or I wanted I wanted to have that experience. And I was a big fan of Bruce Lee. And and Bruce Lee was like the star of Green Hornet, even though he wasn't the Green Hornet. It was this other guy named Cato. And well, well now. We yep. can finally see the Green Hornets. But it's not really that. Today, it's none of that. Today, today in movies. <laughs> today that was a long intro for none of that being relevant. Well, <laughs> well it is. This is we don't. We, hey, Kato's in it. There's never been a Green Hornet movie, right? Um, and there's never been a Green Hornet for our generation. I mean, even from when we were kids, there's never yeah. been a Green Hornet thing. Um, there was, however, a Lone Ranger thing and The Shadow, you know. So uh, today in movies, we're going to talk about the Green Hornets. Um, which is about, uh, you know, following the death of his father, Britt Reed, mm -hmm. the heir to his father's large uh, newspaper company, mm -hmm. uh, teams up with his late dad's assistant, Cato, played by Jay Chu, who was a famous, um, or Jay Chow, a famous Taiwanese pop star, mm. uh, to become a masked crime fighting team uh, battling bad guy, played by uh, Inglorious Bastards, Christoph Waltz. Um, and is this the first thing that he's been in subsequent to Glorious Bastards? Interesting. Um, Interesting. And it's directed by a uh, noted uh, music video commercials director and uh, director of Eternal Sunshine and the Spotless Mind, uh, Michelle Gondry, who we've, oh, no, we we, we've lauded many a time on the show here. Yes, and we should note that I unfortunately was not able to go to the screening due to work. Uh, but so that one's not from giving an opinion. Well, no, I'm excited. To, I have well, questions. Well, I got, I'm excited to yeah. see what you say. And you this will, be will, our, you will get to tell me whether I should actually go see this. And you'll be them for this. I am. You know, I am. So I'm you watch guys. silently. Right. <laughs> so, so, so. Uh, that's funny. Jeff, I was waiting. You don't want to start, Dan? You can start if you want. I want to hear what you really? think. Really? Yeah. No, so tell Jeff. Weird. Weird. No, let him start. That means he has a very strong opinion, pro or con. So, tell him to start. Yeah, so go ahead. Well, here's why I wanted you to start. It's actually the opposite of what Alex said. I, oh. I it's not the opposite of what I know I, you're like kind of lukewarm and I do, I don't like this movie, but I'm not really sure why. Interesting. So you want I, me to to <laughs> No, I'm curious what you think. I, okay. It's not that I'm not sure why. I know why. It's it it's the plot. The plot is very flimsy, but it has a very likable main character. I think Seth Rogen's very fun. You want to be around that guy. He's a fun guy. He says charming things. The movie is at times quite funny. Uh, I laughed out loud several times. Um, there is some really fun action moments, really inventive ways. The Michelle Gondry-ness of the film is at a very high level and not it, it doesn't happen a lot, but when it does happen, it happens in a spectacular fashion. Hmm. There's one scene in particular where th the bad guy is telling his henchmen to go spread the word about the Green Hornet, yeah. and the camera follows one person, and then it splits into a split screen, and that person goes off, and we follow that person in their own camera without a cut, and then that keeps happening, and it keeps splitting and splitting and splitting, and you never see a cut. It's mm. magical. And that's just one example of several things in the film that are Michel Gondry inventive, imaginative, brilliant things. Uh, so that provided me with some entertainment. Uh, and, and there's a big, the big action set piece at the end is, is silly and fun and over the top in a really kind of inventive way. And yet, 
I did not like this movie. Hmm. And I think it's because the plot is so mundane and so by the numbers. How is uh, Christoph Waltz? He's fantastic. He's, yeah? he's okay, just yeah. fantastic. And he does, a, it's a wonderfully written character <clears throat> too because he's, he wants to be, be the bad guy but he keeps getting criticized about how he's the bad guy. Yeah. And he like takes it to heart, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's really, it's re there's lots of stuff to like in this movie, but I never liked what was happening. I never thought the A to B to C plot moments were interesting or, or followed logically. Hmm. I just, I didn't like the origin story of this character. I, I did not like the movie, yet there was a lot to like in the movie. Interesting. interesting. What'd you think? I liked the movie quite a bit. Hmm. However, that, I mean, really the harshest criticism I can give is it, it's, it's the second act just takes a really long time and gets very repetitive, um, and it brought it crashing down for me. Hmm. Um, because I, I started out feeling like, you know, oh my God, this is, this is gonna be, I love this, I love this, and then it just got Meyer, tedious. Yeah. Um, which <laughs> makes me feel the things that you're, all of your criticisms, criticisms you have made. Um, but when I really think about it and I look past that, um, there was, as you said, so much to like. I, I actually was startled by, there are great moments where Michelle Gondry does his thing, even in minor sequence. I mean, the one you mentioned is basically a minor thing, and it's, but it's also basically a Michelle Gondry music video yeah. happening. Um, there's even like a sequence where um, when Burt Reed's being a party guy and he's making out with a chick and it's, he's, yeah. they're all in high speed, but the camera's moving slowly, and it's like, that's a really complicated thing that, that didn't even need to happen. Yeah, yeah, like, but it's but it's cool. Yeah. Um, but I actually thought the movie Kick Ass had a lot more style um, and a more more unique visual take than this movie did, hmm. um, which is interesting um, because Michelle Gondry certainly is a much more stylistic filmmaker. However, what I loved about this movie was, like Kick Ass. Um, has this commentary on superhero movies and, and superheroism and grounds uh, superhero movie, uh, superhero story in tropes. In a harsh reality. He's, yeah, 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 grounds it in, in it, or ha has a, has a, has a uh, an attitude about it. This movie had that, not for superhero <clears throat> movies, but for action movies. <clears throat> it basically did everything that Pineapple Express was trying to do, or, or did for many people. We didn't, I didn't like Pineapple Express very much. I wish, this is what I wanted out of Pineapple Express. The action in this movie is awesome, as it, it should have been in Pineapple Express. The, there, this movie has hilarious moments that are, that are funny, but also like grounding these things that we've seen so many times, yeah. and like it's the, finally commenting on it. And you know, really, he's, it's very much like, um, I know one of the things you're probably wondering is, is Seth Rogen like really trying to be a badass? I kind of figured that that wasn't gonna happen it's not, at yeah. all. Which is sort of, and that, the trailers did that, where yeah. he was clearly sort of the bumbling, I'm just along for the ride and Kato, which is sort of more like the Bruce Lee character from the original, but the, but the Green Hornet was a superhero, you know what yeah, I mean? He was yeah, a yeah, yeah. So it wasn't a it's, comic. It was different than that. Yeah. And no, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, and that's really what's great, and what's really great, I think, I think you would like it, I think what especially you would like is that is a plot. Is Kato is adorable? Like <laughs> you love adorable. No, I, mean, like, I love adorable. I, I can just see you getting into th their friendship. Is re it's fun that they have a, a real friendship where they get mad at each. It's not like every other sidekick yeah. thing where yeah. they're just whatever, Batman and Rob. Like they get mad at each other yeah. in a French in a way that we might get mad at each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they have to get like that's great. That that's the drama of the movie yeah. is their friendship. Um, it, 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 to, to the point where Kat, uh, Cameron Diaz does not need to be in this movie. It is it is like every other Seth Rogen movie in the sense that it's a rom it's a bromance yeah. and it is so much about she's a little bit of male that, relation. But... No, not really. I, well, I think she's quite definitively. I mean, she's a foil for their bromance, but not really. Not really. Only mm. only in the most superficial level do they. Because she's this pretty thing, it, there's no. She does not affect that in any way, shape, or form, and she's oblivious to it. You know. It, anyway, but that's a side point. Uh, my 
my main problem with, uh, it's interesting that you bring up Kick-Ass because I also recalled Kick-Ass in this film. And, and the thing that's so interesting to me about Kick-Ass is that it's got really got something to say. And I don't think this movie does. And I think th th there was a moment in this movie where they, they pull up in the, the Hornet Mobile or whatever it is, and they're in South Central LA, yeah. and they pull by, and you see this shot like illuminated only by headlights of these like real gangbangers, and it looks like news footage almost. It, uh, not really, but it looks like very realistic. These aren't yeah. actors playing gangbangers. It looks like they drove by in a car and caught it, right? Right. And I and I started thinking, wow, maybe this what this movie really is about is putting these kind of guys who are hyper and and. Uh, uh, comic booky in this realistic situation and seeing what happens, which is kind of what Kickass was talking about. But it, this movie never really does that. It mm -hmm. just kind of teases that. I, I don't know that Kickass does it to the degree at which I would like it to. Yeah. No, but but Kickass is kind of about like these ideas don't work in the real world. Yeah, this is more about the character as opposed to. Yeah. The, the, this is more ha yeah. interested in having fun and being silly and all the top. How is it 3D? Not, Not good. good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let, let me be clear. Let me be clear. It's actually very technically. I thought it was very good. Um, I, 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 I think I would not have really known it was a post. -conv like it didn't look the way people had said we never saw Clash of Titans in 3D. But the way people were criticizing that, yeah, yeah. You know, this didn't feel that way. However, I this doesn't need to be in 3D. No, it should. Yeah. It doesn't need to be. This I had a There's major one sequence where it was. I had a major cool. turning point sitting in this film, and I, I went. I don't want to see, see. I don't want to see 3D movies. I want to see 3D if the majority of the film is was created in a in computer. 3D. Yeah. In a yeah. computer. Yeah. 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 Interesting. I don't need to see 3D so like Tron of or real Avatar. people. Yeah. Avatar. Uh, Tron. Legacy. 3D animated films. Yeah. Yes. Owls of Gahul, Please. Yeah. Megamind. Absolutely. This. No. Interesting. Yeah. It just. Right. Yeah. Well. Good, good to know. There you go. So remember to stick around for this day in rad history. But we do want to thank our sponsors. Uh, I don't know. First off, this is a great sponsor shirt because they they gave me one, and it's like a shirt that I wear, which is awesome. <laughs> anyway, so basically, this Square is great because I wear it. Because I wear, yeah. Squarespace.com. If you have not, if you have any reason to have a website, a blog, a portfolio, any reason to be on the web, you should get yourself a Squarespace.com account. It is the best place to host your internet content. Uh, the most amazing WYSIWYG editor on the planet. Uh, it's super easy to customize your sites and make them look extremely professional. Some of the top sites on the internet are uh, Squarespace sites. Not only that, they've now announced this new social widget, which allows you to connect all of your check-in locations in one widget, your Foursquare, Goala, Facebook, uh, places, the live Google Maps, all of that stuff is all native and built in. Um, and it's the only web platform that actually has that natively built in uh, solution. Uh, so check it out. Also, an iPhone app, um, which is unbelievable. You can get your stats for your website on the go. You can update your website on the go. Great stuff. Head over to squarespace.com for a free account. Check it out. If you like it and you're going to purchase an account, use the coupon code TRS when you check out, and you'll save 10% off the lifetime of your site. Plus, they have 24-7 support. I mean, it's, it's great. It's great. And as a side note, if you run a business called Blue Button Up, you might want to sponsor our show. Because make a great shirt. Oh, I was I like, what are you talking about? It was a callback from way earlier, and it was very worth it. Amazing. Squarespace, though. We'll Seriously, We'll see you it. guys tomorrow. Don't miss tomorrow's show, where we play Versus. So today is January 13th. On this day in rad history, way back in 1957, Whammo, the company, uh, sent put out the first Frisbee called the Flying Saucer. Of course, Whammo made uh, the hula hoop, slip and slide, and Super Bowl. Which yeah. I don't know what Super Bowl is, but you know what, it's a ball. The ball, the it. bouncy ball. Oh, yeah. just a bouncy. The ball. original. The, I mean, they, they bounced super they made high. The hula hoop. They made slip and slide. This came out yeah. back in the '60s, Whammo. which is crazy. Yeah. yeah. I know. I always remember. Brought to you by Whammo. Whammo. Yeah. 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 So and thank you, Kobe Vasquez, for sending that. The name Whammo. I just want to say because I was looking this up. They did the uh, slingshot. That was the okay. first thing they ever made. And that's the sign that makes me hit your brother. Yeah. Whammo.